Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com and supported by this amazing AI study tool called Wisdolia. At the end of this session, I would be providing you with a link for the practice sessions through which you can solve multiple choice questions and clinical scenario based questions based on the topic which I'm going to cover. If you like this study tool, you can consider subscribing. Make sure you use this unique coupon code I love pathology 33 for a 33% discount on the subscription. So moving on to today's topic. This is a very small topic in respiratory system pathology. We will be discussing about atelectasis and pulmonary sequestration. So in the next 6 to 8 minutes, let's learn about the definition types and morphology of atelectasis, the definition types morphology of pulmonary sequestration. Firstly, atelectasis. Now, this basically it is a combination of two Greek words. One is ateles, which means imperfect or incomplete and ectasis meaning expansion. So by definition, atelectasis is incomplete expansion of the lungs or collapse of the previously inflated lung parenchyma, right? So both are used interchangeably often, atelectasis or collapse. So the consequence of atelectasis is that it results in areas of poorly aerated pulmonary parenchyma. Atelectasis is broadly categorized into congenital atelectasis and acquired atelectasis. Congenital is also referred to as neonatal atelectasis, whereas the acquired one, which is more common in adult, it is referred to as adult atelectasis. So this congenital atelectasis has structural abnormalities, which is present at birth. For example, congenital pulmonary airway malformation, right, where there is incomplete airway expansion. So adult one which is the most common type of atelectasis, is the condition that occurs after birth, right? That's either due to obstruction or due to compression or because of scarring of the lung parenchyma, okay? So, it, this adult type of atelectasis is what we call as collapse because this is the collapse of the previously inflated lung parenchyma. Whereas, in neonatal or the congenital one, the lung parenchyma is not completely inflated. Okay, so basically there is incomplete airway expansion that is neonatal, whereas collapse of the previously inflated lung parenchyma is acquired atelectasis. Right? So there are three important types of adult atelectasis. One is resorption atelectasis, two compression, and three contraction atelectasis. Let's see what is this resorption atelectasis. Basically, there is an obstruction in the airway. It could be an obstruction in the bronchus or any part of the bronchus. The obstruction can also be because of excessive secretions, for example, thick mucus plugs, or it can be exudate within the smaller bronchi, which may occur in you know chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and few of the post-operative states. It could be aspiration of foreign bodies, which can cause obstruction, or it can be tumor arising within the bronchi or intra-bronchial tumors. All these can result in obstruction, and this obstruction can obstruction, you know, over the period of time, what happens? In the distal, the air is resorbed from the distal alveoli and then the lung gradually collapses. Okay, So, this kind of atelectasis, because the air is resorbed, it's called as resorption atelectasis. Remember, it's almost always because of obstruction of the airway. Another important to note that if you do a radiological, if you perform a radiological examination in these patients, you can see that the mediastinum is shifted towards the atelectatic lung. That's important. You no know, diagnostic feature, whether you are dealing with you no know, resorption type or another type of atelectasis. In this case, the mediastinum is shifted, has shifted towards the atelectatic lung. If the obstruction is taken off or relieved, then this can, the lung parenchyma can revert back to its normalcy. That's why resorption type of atelectasis is a reversible atelectasis. Second one is the compression atelectasis, where you can have filling of the pleural cavity. Normally, the pleural space is very less, right? So, if there is anything which can fill the pleural cavity, it could be fluid, fluid in the form of transudate, it can be purulent material or exudate, or it can be blood when it is called empyema. 
okay the pleural cavity can also be filled by pleural tumors it can also be filled by air when it is called pneumothorax now what happens when the pleural cavity is filled it sort of compresses the lung parenchyma adjacent lung parenchyma as if there is an external pressure on to this part of the lung parenchyma and consequently there is collapse of this particular part of the lung parenchyma this is compression at leg passes radiologically you can see that the mediastinum is shifted away from the atelectatic lung. Okay, that's an interesting feature to note that in this case, there is shift of mediastinum away from the atelectatic lung and this is also a reversible condition. Once the you know, content of the pleural cavity is taken off, the lung can revert back to its normalcy. So, it is a reversible stage. The third type of atelectatic passage is called contraction type of atelectatic is now usually this kind of atelectasis is found in individuals who have lots of scarring or fibrosis of the lung parenchyma and the scarring can be because of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis could be because of various occupational lung disorders where fibrosis is one of the most you know, important manifestation these are pneumoconiosis it could be because of chronic pulmonary infections, particularly you know, like the likes of tuberculosis or some drugs can also result in fibrosis. So, all said and done, what happens when there is fibrosis? That will restrict the lung expansion, right? So, there is this is a fibrotic lung. This is a normal outline of the supposed to be normal appearing lung parenchyma. So, because of the fibrosis of the lungs, it restricts the lung parenchyma leading on to collapse. In contrast to the other types of atelectasis we studied, this is an irreversible type of atelectasis. One is resorption because of you know, obstruction, compression because of flow, I mean something which fills the pleural cavity and third one is contraction because of extensive fibrosis or scarring. Now, how do these patients manifest? So usually the features are that of underlying cause. You can find, you can see that there could be symptoms of obstruction in the form of cough. You know there can be symptoms of tumor. There can be symptoms of you know pleural effusion. All these manifestations basically results that of an underlying cause. But then remember, if there is significant arterial process, okay, or significant collapse of the lung parenchyma then it can reduce oxygenation which results in shortness of breath or even respiratory distress if the collapse is too much okay and it is also important to note that the atelectatic lung is very less effective at clearing mucus and debris and that is why it is very prone very much prone for infections okay and of course you can uh, see the signs of infection or you know elicit the signs of inflammation or infection in these patients so that's how clinically they manifest depending upon whether the atelectasis is significant or whether the atelectatic lung had has infection how do you treat atelectasis Usually, again, you have to treat the underlying cause. If there is obstruction, relieve the obstruction. If there is infection, treat the infection. Of course, fibrosis, you cannot make, make out anything because it is irreversible type of atelectasis, right? And if the atelectatic lung is infected, treat the secondary infections. And finally, it is basically a supportive kind of therapy by lung physiotherapy. And as I told you, prognostically, the contraction atelectasis which is a irreversible one has bad prognosis as compared to that of the earlier types of atelectasis. Moving on to pulmonary sequestration. What do you mean by sequestration or pulmonary sequestration? This means that you have a, you have a discrete area of lung tissue which is not connected to the airways. Okay and Apart from that, it also has an abnormal blood supply arising from aorta or its branches. Because it is not connected to the airways, it is also referred to as accessory lung. This accessory lung is non-functional lung. What are the types of pulmonary sequestration? It can be intralobar or extralobar. Okay? This is intralobar pulmonary sequestration which is often seen within the lung parenchyma it is usually found in older children and what is important to note that it lacks its own visceral pleura which means though it is an area of lung parenchyma which is not connected to the airways it does not have its own visceral pleura 
whereas extra low bar is external to the lung okay this can be above the diaphragm or below the diaphragm it is extra low bar suprafrenic extra low bar subphrenic right it is external to the lung parenchyma and usually these are the ones which are most commonly present in infants as a mass lesion can be associated with other congenital anomalies and remember it has got its own visceral pleura the visceral pleura is separate how do these manifest most often the intralobar sequestration are asymptomatic but the symptomatic ones are the ones which are extra low bar sequestration and that too is, is significant you know they manifest in early infancy with respiratory distress it can manifest as congenital heart failure or even pulmonary hemorrhage histopathologically though this is a part of lung tissue this is often a dysplastic lung tissue where you know it displays evidence of lymphocytic infiltration and fibrosis you have lots of dilated alveolar spaces and you can also sometimes present see presence of cystic air spaces which are lined by cuboidal or columnar epithelium that's why it's also referred to as dysplastic lung parenchyma but so you can identify that this is a sequestration of the lung how do you treat these pulmonary sequestrations lobectomy was considered as a treatment of choice in earlier days right but then presently uh, people also try out with conservative management and they have found out that the lobectomy and the conservative management has no difference in the outcomes how do you i mean it, there is also a newer modality, modality of treatment like you know they do endovascular embolization and coiling this is emerging as a theory, the, you know new therapeutic alternative the prognosis if you consider prognosis intralobar low bar one has a good prognosis extra low bar particularly if it is associated with pulmonary hypoplasia it has got a very poor prognosis and even you know extra low bar among the extra low bar if it is intra abdominal it has a better prognosis as compared to that of suprafrenic extra low bar sequestration so that's all for today we have just understood the concepts of fatal ectasis and pulmonary sequestration before i conclude this topic i would still suggest you to consider attempting the practice sessions via visjolia because you have the options of you know solving multiple choice questions and attempting clinical scenario based questions the, the understanding of your topic becomes much much stronger and also i told you in the beginning itself if you wish to subscribe use this unique code i love pathology 33 for a 33% discount on your subscriptions thank you for watching if you have liked the video hit the like button do comment if you have any questions to ask i would also like to have comments from your experience on visdolia platform consider subscribing please do share if you find this video useful thank you